This is a true story. Anderson Silva broke the record for most consecutive wins in the UFC. He made the top guys in the world look easy. For a handful of years, no one can come close to him. He broke the uh, record for most consecutive title defenses. People love finishes, and Anderson could always provide a finish at any moment. Nobody can do what this guy can do. He's the pound for pound best fighter in the world. And he had achieved that against some of the best fighters in the world. Got us thinking he wasn't even human. He's the greatest of all time. No one was like even close. No one. I think he's the greatest in any combat sport. And all of that was true until 2013. I respect the game, man. None of us are invincible. Look, a lot of you may know the story of Anderson Silva. I just try to enjoy every single moment I come inside the cage. But not enough of you understand his story. I working hard, I pass experience in my life, bad and good, and today I I feel... You know he's a legend, you know there's tragedy, and you know there's a very rich career in between. There's this dirtbag named Anderson Silva. I'm gonna put him on his prissy little ass. I don't wanna fight Anderson, I wanna beat him down. This guy me bateu cinco rounds, me bateu mais do que eu apanhei toda a minha vida inteira. But you haven't fully understood that the reason we love him is the reason he will never be the GOAT. My first professional fight, I drive to the city and I fight four times the same day, $100. Cara, fiz a primeira luta. Uma garra, garra, uma garra, garra, e cai no chão, me levanta, e cai no chão, levanta. Eu acabei que eu consegui finalizar o cara. Peguei as costas do cara e finalizei. Anderson Silva finished his first professional MMA fight in under two minutes with a suffocating rear naked choke. When I finished, I just talked to my, my professor in the time. I look at him and say, that's crazy. I never go do this again. Despite his reservations, Anderson took on Fabricio Camoes for his second pro fight. I'm literally scared because you never know what happened inside. I fight with the best jiu-jitsu guy in the time. Fabricio Morango is a student of uh, Hoyler Grace, is a black belt. Is it funny? Because in the time I'm blue belt. Way lower. Yeah. yeah, I pick up something fast and I win the fight. And uh, that's a start. Doing a fight in Brazil a lot, in the Mecca. You know. Mecca was a new Brazilian MMA promotion. In fact, Anderson participated in the very first Mecca event. When I have my first baby, I don't have nothing except my talent and my energy to doing something for my family, you know. Anderson spent the entirety of the match on his back with no sign of any grappling skills, leading to his first professional loss. A dominant and humiliating loss like this while you have a family to take care of is enough to make you wonder, did you even choose the right career path? I, I guess I kind of want to start it off going going back to like how you initially got into fighting overall, right? Because I, I, I know that you wanted to be a soccer player. As a young boy, Anderson loved soccer, but after missing soccer tryouts, he was approached by the boxing trainer next door. I come to try the, the tryout to play football, but I'm too late. Coach Vitor just look at me and say, okay, take this stuff and let's go training. Was and that's it? my first... Uh, contact with boxing. But that was just boxing. Anderson's love of martial arts actually came much earlier. Então, sempre gostei de luta, né? Eu comecei a treinar, eu tinha 8 anos de idade. A lot of people think it's dancing, but it's not. It's a, a capoeira. And I start training capoeira in the school. That's my first contact with martial arts. My great motivation is Bruce Lee, watching Bruce, the, the movies for Bruce Lee. My brother's training Muay Thai and I say, whoa, one day I go training too and I start training. Anderson became infatuated with all martial arts, boxing, capoeira, taekwondo, Muay Thai, even jiu-jitsu. I start training with my friends, my neighborhoods, because in the time I don't have money for training jiu-jitsu because jiu-jitsu is so expensive. And the yeah. guys give me my first gi and I start training and I say, whoa, that's cool. Despite being born into poverty, Anderson just found a way to develop his martial arts skills. They were his way of feeling like a superhero. And when you're a talented young spider kid raised by your aunt and uncle, you will do anything to feel like a superhero, even rejecting the family career path. I student for Com Cop, the same my brothers and my, my dad, but uh, I feel it's not for me. Fight word come in my life very natural. You know, because I don't have too much options. Oh, come cop the same my brother, my dad, or 
fighting. And I grew up in a, in a city, it's a very famous city about MMA fighters. And the time is, uh, the name is not MMA, it's a Vale Tudo. And uh, a lot of guys fighting in the time. Vanderlei Silva and uh, the other guys, you know, they yeah. say, whoa, that's crazy sport, but I, maybe I can do that. I never realized this happened in my life. You know, I become a professional fighter. Anderson won his next two fights in Mecca, finishing both of his opponents in the first round, which, as you can imagine, opened a lot of doors for him. Através do Mecca, eu consegui a oportunidade de lutar é, no Japão. I fight in Japan, I fight in Korea, I fight in the different... Uh, Country. Anderson got the opportunity to fight in Shuto in 2001, a big step up from Mecca, and won a decision against a much more experienced fighter. A few months later, he scored another first round TKO in Mecca before returning back to Shuto for his biggest fight yet. When I fight for the, my first title belt with Hayato Sakurai, that's my hard fight. It's a hard fight for me because it's the first time I realize I fight for respect to my country. The two flags come, Brazil, Japan, Japan and Brazil. Yeah. And I start the Nacional Brazilian, you know, and I say, whoa, now that's serious. It's I for your country. Yeah. It's, it's about my country. Hayato Sakurai is a Japanese mixed martial arts legend, and at the time, he was the Shuto middleweight champion. But by this point, Anderson was a more well-rounded martial artist, winning the exchanges on the feet, taking down Sakurai, taking his back, landing vicious ground and pound, and attempting submissions on the ground to ultimately win a decision and become the Shuto middleweight champion. Silva stayed busy by returning to Mecca and snatching another quick TKO victory before moving up to the big leagues. E aí eu acabei tendo a oportunidade de lutar no Pride. Eu tinha uma pequena desvantagem, porque eu pesava 83, 85. E a categoria não tinha a minha categoria 84. Era 90 e 90, 95 pra cima. Between June 2002 and June 2003, Anderson fought strictly in Pride Fighting Championships. Mas eu tinha vantagem de treinar com os caras mais pesados e Sim. ser mais ágil, Sim. né? At Pride 21, Anderson Silva landed a ruthless head kick to split open Alex Stiebling's face and win via doctor's stoppage. Anderson was so good he could handle Alexander Otsuka at Pride 22 and deal with meatheads at a bar the next day. Did you ever get in any fights as a security guard there? A lot. There? Really? <laughs> yeah, a lot. The guy is a big guy and I start to doing something in the bar. Everybody say, oh, I don't go talk to with this guy because he's big and, and every time the guy come here and destroy everything. I didn't say, bro, listen, I'm here to work. You're doing something crazy here. You make problem for me. Please don't do that. And the guy's, oh, come on, Anderson. Don't worry. I go. I got you. I got you. And the, the manager come talk to me. What do you say for the guy? I say, you have two choice. You stop doing something crazy or I go kick your ass. <laughs> but I, I never say that. <laughs> Silva. Anderson Silva secured a decision victory against Alexander Otsuka to round out 2002 and earn a fight against Carlos Newton, the former UFC welterweight champion and submission specialist. I'm very lucky because in the time Minotauro helped me, mas a minha vida financeira realmente mudou quando o Minotauro me abraçou to come more professional fighter you know, more experience in the jiu-jitsu, more experience in no-gi, and uh, I start fight in the high level. Learning under the legendary Noguera brothers truly gave Anderson Silva the edge he needed with the jumping competition. I started to understand that I needed to improve my technique, and then I started to study a lot more. And then there was a moment there, man, that it was a lot easier for me. Mais fácil. Eu tinha uma visão além do que o cara estava fazendo. Eu já tinha visto ele várias vezes. Ele vai fazer isso. Ele vai fazer isso. Ele vai fazer isso. Anderson officially entered the matrix by knocking out a former UFC champion with a flying knee. Unfortunately, his next three fights were a little more rocky. He was submitted via triangle choke at Pride 26 and won two more fights in Brazil and Korea before setting his sights on the UK. Then he went over and fought in Cage Rage. He fought in England. He fights uh, Lee Murray in Cage Rage. And Lee Murray was a f and killer. Lee Murray was the British chat. He was the guy to beat, but you turned everyone around. Because after you beat Lee Murray, everybody started to love you. It's true. Anderson won a decision victory over a hot prospect in Lee Murray to become the Cage Rage middleweight champion. And while Anderson stole the UK's heart, Lee Murray 
just stole. Lee Murray was the guy who was involved in the biggest armed robbery in the history of the UK. But hey, that's a story for another day, because after becoming Cage Rage champion, Anderson returned to Pride for the final time, and the result was less than desirable. He had lost a fight by a, a leg scissor knee bar, but he was flying, dominating that fight. Flying leg yeah. scissor. But he was dominating that fight up until that moment as well. It was actually a heel hook, not a knee bar, but that's neither here nor there. Anderson needed to bounce back and defend his cage rage title. When he fought in England, I was like, holy sh**. When he was standing in front of Jorge Rivera Ooh. and letting him punch him in the face, you got to see how damn good Anderson really was when he was in his prime. Anderson knocked out George Rivera in the second round to become a defending champion. He's lucky George's first name wasn't Lionel, or he'd have been in some serious trouble. But lucky for him, trouble wouldn't find him. Because Anderson would finish Curtis Stout for his second cage rage title defense. In the time, I'm happy in, in the cage rage because I never put in my mind I fight in UFC. Eu fiquei quatro anos no cage rage. Nessa transição, o Pride já tava meio que para acabar tava para acabar e o UFC já tava começando a estar em ascensão. While the UFC was becoming the hot new thing, Anderson does what Anderson does and took one more random fight at Rumble on the Rock one month later and before the fight could even get going, well, got disqualified. That's right. Fighting Yushin Okami. Anderson threw an illegal upkick to a grounded Yushin Okami to earn his first DQ loss and fourth overall loss. Then he goes over and fights Tony Fricklin in Cage Rage and hits him with that crazy upward elbow. By the time he was coming to the UFC, I was like, dude, get ready for this guy. Eu tava lutando lá no Cage Rage e os caras me ligaram. Falou, ó, oh, UFC quer você aqui. Eu falei, ah, legal, né? Hey, UFC, what's up? You want me to come over and begin one of the greatest careers in MMA history? Cool. When he came into the UFC, he was already in his 30s. My first fight in UFC is uh, very interesting for me. Chris Lieben was such a striker. He had a uh, head made out of concrete. You just simply couldn't hurt him. It was hard to imagine how Anderson was going to beat Chris Lieben. After he gets in there with me and I knock him out, he may, he may want to go back to Japan or somewhere where the competition's a little easier. I think you might live to regret those words, Chris. Oh, regret those words he shall. I mean, he might take a worse beating than this Ridge Wallace. It. Dang, that's durable. I know a lot of you and your dads are carrying around bulky wallets that need upgrading, and Ridge is making gifting easy with one of their biggest sales of the year for Father's Day. The Ridge wallet can hold up to 12 cards, and you can switch between the money clip, cash strap, and add an air tag attachment so you never lose your wallet. It's the perfect gift for your dad, spouse, or brother, but it doesn't stop there. This is the Ridge key case. Securely store up to six keys in a compact case that prevents your keys from jingling. And remember, Ridge wallets, key cases, watches, and backpacks look just as good as they function. My favorite thing about Ridge is the consistent durability. I use the backpack to go camping, and now it's my go-to for traveling. So whether it's wallets, key cases, watches, backpacks, or more, give a gift that will last a lifetime. Save up to 40% off using my link, ridge.com slash Lionel through June 15th. That's ridge.com slash Lionel, or just click the link in the description. Thanks to Rich for sponsoring this video, and now back to Anderson Silva. When Anderson Silva first fought Chris Lieben, yeah. I, I remember the odds were like real close. In my mind, I say, oh my God. I'm in UFC right now. And at the time, Chris Lieben was smashing people. Chris Lieben was on a five-fight UFC win streak, and Anderson Silva just lost five months prior. This was an uphill battle. We knew it was going to be a tough fight. We had a great game plan. I threw the game plan right out the window. All the things that you tell a fighter, a young fighter, not to do, Chris Lieben was doing them. It was yeah. a perfect fight in terms of like you want to see like the effectiveness yeah. of like high level timing, speed, and perfect technique. Every punch, knee, and kick he threw landed. The night I fight with Chris Lieben and changed completely my life. When he destroyed Lieben, I said, man, if you keep destroying people like that, nobody's going to want to fight you. And he was like, oh, I hope not. I, I want to fight. I need to make money. Anderson Silva walked through Lieben like it was nothing. Knocked him out in the first round. What can you say? He was He's better. He was, he was just better in, in every aspect. I guess it's cool now I could say I got knocked out by Anderson Silva. Not too many people can say that. Not many people can say that? <laughs> 
Who's gonna tell him? Fiz a primeira luta, daí fiz a segunda luta com Rich Franklin. A lot of people truly believe that Rich Franklin was gonna was gonna be the person who was gonna decimate Anderson Silva. He had so much respect for you. He, he, you know, you were the man. Rich is a different animal. Rich can take him down. Rich is southpaw. Rich is gonna give him some problems. Anderson was thrusted into a UFC middleweight title fight in just his second fight with the promotion against Rich Franklin, an already impressive champion. But we just didn't know. Rich Franklin, who spent years here, made it to the top of the world. It looked like it was his first day. Anderson went out there, and I didn't realize because I had never seen Rich Franklin defend a clinch. For whatever reason, we overlooked the clinch work the first time. Um, be, I, I think primarily because I'm a lot physically bigger than him and just figured that I was that much stronger than him and it wouldn't be a problem, and uh, obviously it was. And Anderson is hitting him with several knees and then opening up with elbows, and the sound that was coming out of Rich Franklin was... Uh, it's almost like he had cheat codes. Like he could just see what they were doing. Yeah. He was just like, oh, like I the do Matrix. this. And you do that. Okay, well, I'm going to do this. And I know you're going to do that. And pop, there it goes. Took Rich's nose and pushed it across his face. And I stopped the fight. And Anderson Silva was the new middleweight champion in the UFC. I'll tell you, Anderson is a, a very, very respectful opponent. And when you lose a title to somebody like that, you can't. I, I couldn't have lost a better man. This Rich Franklin and Anderson Silva fight was definitely a changing of the guard, but it really was just the beginning of a new a new era. Dali para frente, cara, eu eu era um tipo bitolado assim, eu só treinava e estudava luta, eu treinava e estudava luta. Anderson Silva became UFC champion in two UFC fights, four months in between. If you don't understand how fast that is, you might have more CTE than Tito Ortiz. I want to outlive my children. Of course, 100%. But seriously, Anderson just finished a respectable champion. But hey, maybe Travis Luter has something for him. I thought I had a very good chance of beating him because of my wrestling, and I had really good jiu-jitsu. I took him down, I passed his guard, I mounted him. I thought I had him on the ropes uh, in the first round when I had him mounted. You know, I thought I was going to knock him out, and then got up kicked. And that flash of an instance is like, man, what if I f***ing piss myself or shit myself on, on live TV here? Travis Luter is one great tool he has in submissions. Anderson Silva ends up submitting him. Oh. Travis Luter tapped, and Anderson Silva is victorious. Anderson forced Travis Luter to submit to elbows while locked in the Spiders Triangle. I mean, talk about beautiful violence, but you know what's better than a second round TKO? What he did to Nate Marquardt. Nate Marquardt, anybody who's been in this business for long enough knows his capabilities and how good he is. Anderson walks right through him. A first round TKO delivered to another seasoned veteran. At this point, not many guys were raising their hand to face the spider. I consider, personally, uh, Anderson Silva, pound for pound, the best fighter in the world right now. So it was time for a rematch against the man Silva took the belt from. I said, man, he's more heavy, so he won't have the same ability as me. I started to notice that my normal reflex, when I was in the position of fighting, of attention, with the high guard, he wouldn't pass my guard. And I said, man, if I start to raise my hand, automatically my reflex will increase. Foi na minha segunda luta com o Rich Franklin que eu comecei a baixar. Quando eu baixei e ele jogou os melhores golpes dele, jogou um chute também e não pegou, eu vi um, a bolinha do olho dele mudando. <risos> eu falei, ah, agora é a hora. Anderson's been fighting for a long time, and he's one of those guys who's an incredible athlete, he's incredibly gifted, he's very well-rounded, and he's coming into his own. This guy's in his prime right now. Tonight is just uh, showing you what I do every day. Uh, nothing there was uh, a surprise to me or something that I just pulled out of the hat. Those movements, those things I do, I train every day. So it was just like another day at the office. Any chance matching him with uh, Dan Henderson? That's what Dan Henderson, very good possibility. That would be a very intriguing fight. That would be an interesting fight because Dan Henderson was the last Pride middleweight and Pride welterweight champion when the UFC bought Pride. So this fight would unify the Pride and UFC championships at 185 pounds. Henderson stands out as a huge threat. I think that he's a, a tough guy and, and very skilled, but I wouldn't consider him the top pound for pound fighter. You were one of the few guys who while Anderson Silva has been in the UFC, has been able to uh, win a round against him. That first round, arguably, you perform better than anyone else. Just take him down and pound the shit out of him. Henderson was finding success with superior wrestling, but in the second round, I guess you could say the turns tabled. Once we're out in the open, I, I remember catching a, a nice little knee to the face. 
Next thing you know, he was on my back uh, choking me. That was one of his strengths, was being able to finish guys when he got them hurt. The one guy that we thought would be his biggest challenger, and he doesn't even get out of the second round. He's going to be holding this division for a good time now. It was less than two years since he won the belt, and Silva was already considered the pound-for-pound -pound best and too good for his contenders. So, he tested the waters at light heavyweight. Sandman James Irvin. James, we last saw you in action, Ultimate Fight Night 14 against Spider Silva. A tough loss for you. Were you expecting him to be that strong coming out of the gates? My coaches did tell me not to throw a single kick the whole first round, and it's exactly what I did. I went out there and threw a kick, and he made me pay for it. And then I remember waking up on the ground, looking at my hands, and blood was just pouring out of my face. You, you are, you're probably the best guy to ask right now. Do you consider him the best fighter in the world? You know, I think he's proved it, and I don't think there's anyone in the world that can uh, you know, deny that he's not the pound-for-pound -pound champion. James Irvin lasted 61 seconds, not because he was a bad fighter, but because Anderson Silva was just that good. The number one contender to Anderson Silva's UFC middleweight title, Patrick the Predator Cote. I think most people consider Anderson Silva the best pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world. Do you agree with that? Sure. The first one I saw live was UFC 90. Uh, he fought Patrick Cote. But that first round, he used like probably seven different styles to just hit him. And then I keep saying he uses telekinesis on his knee. He just blowed it out. Patrick Cote blew out his knee against Anderson Silva, which resulted in a TKO victory for the Spider, and it was back to the office. Anderson Silva versus Talos Latis. Talos has a 14 and one record. This kid has not lost a fight in over two years. Anderson, he has something special because he's the number one. Fun for part of the world. Mentally, in the fight combat, is a very similar to the soldier. It's not about money. It's not about come famous. It's about mission and finish the fucking mission. You need to die for prove your respect and finish your mission. Do it. And still. Anderson went to his first decision victory in the UFC against Talos Latis, proving that this soldier could march you down for a full 25 minutes. It wasn't but four months later that Anderson would return to light heavyweight to test his skills against another legend. And if I could have given him any advice, it would have been run, Forrest. Run. Well, they wanted a big slow guy to follow Anderson around and make him look real good. <laughs> and they're like, Forrest is a big slow guy. He takes a beating well. Oh, I'll get him to do it. He's stupid. <laughs> and, uh, the worst thing that the kids said to me is people ask who I'm fighting and I tell them for Anderson Silva and they go, yeah. The night I fight with uh, Forrest, I just say, you know what? I go do my best, but my great and special inspiration is Muhammad Ali for the night. You know you're f***ed when the guy you're fighting is pondering, hey, what style do I want to use to whoop this guy's ass? It's almost uh, a little freedom in, some, in fighting the best guy, you know? Just, you know, you, uh, you can't do any worse than people have done. Uh, roll the tape. The worst thing you can do against a guy like Anderson Silva is just charge in and try to land big shots on him. That's, that's his dream opponent. He's baiting you. He's setting traps for you. I just started throwing fucking hammers at nothing. He's out. He's out. And it is all over. He's untouchable. You don't see him bleed. You barely see him sweat. Uh, guys are afraid to fight him, as they should be. Anderson knocked out Forrest Griffin with a jab at a weight class that isn't even his. And now, despite having his next opponent lined up in Damian Maya, people wanted to see Anderson Silva take on the dominant welterweight champion of the world, George St. Pierre. How do you feel about possibly facing George St. Pierre in the future? It's pretty really important for me to fight the George again. Anderson Silva, at the uh, pre-fight press conference, he said that he would consider going down to 170 to fight GSP. Is that something you'd be interested in to see him cut way down to 170? If it's true, if he could cut down to 170, then I would uh, I would look at a GSP fight. I, I would do it. How close was that fight to happening? Ah, uh, never come close to happen. Not at all? No, never at all. Was there you talks know? about it? A lot of talk, a lot of talk, but never happened. This was the super fight everyone wanted to see, but there were a lot of reasons it didn't happen. I go more in depth on this topic in my GSP documentary on the channel, so make sure to check that video out when you're done with this one. But for now, Anderson had to face Damian Maya, another seasoned veteran known for his phenomenal jujitsu and apparently lack of respect for the spider. And the disrespect Anderson felt manifested itself 
in the worst way possible. Dana, you, you said a lot of big words today. Embarrassed, disgrace. Is this your lowest moment as president of uh, UFC? No doubt about it. Absolutely, 100%. I don't think I've ever been more embarrassed in the 10 years of being in this business. Anderson Silva, everybody's angry at him. And, every, and it was a very disappointing fight, especially because the first two rounds, he looked like, like, Bruce Lee. Anderson had a very bizarre performance where he was clearly much better than Damian Maya, but decided to play with his food and let us all know that he was playing with his food. Damian disrespected me, and I take that very seriously. And uh, I came here to do my job, and that was to beat him up. You know, he was showboating and doing whatever he was doing. And that's, that's not what I'm into. I don't like it. Unfortunately, it didn't turn out and everyone was in pleased. It's the first time that I've ever walked out on a main event and given the belt to the guy's manager and told him to put it on him. Anderson the Spider Silva! Nobody has been more supportive of Anderson Silva than me. Talking about him being the pound for pound best fighter in the world. He said the other day that he wanted to cut to 170. Right. And uh, fight GSP. I don't want to see that fight now. He doesn't deserve to fight GSP. That may seem rough, but everyone was angry with Anderson at the time. But hey, the UFC learned their lesson. Don't give Anderson a disrespectful opponent. There's this dirtbag named Anderson Silva. Anderson Silva is easily the most unpopular fighter in this company. I'm here purely to win the world championship period, and it doesn't have a lot to do with Anderson. Getting to beat up Anderson is just a bonus. I'm gonna put him on his prissy little ass. Anderson Silva walks into the ring. You could hear a rat piss on cotton. When I walk in, it's thunder. Anderson Silva was slated to face the American gangster Chael P. Sonnen at UFC 117, and it was really the first time that someone treated Anderson Silva like he was a bum. I don't wanna fight Anderson, I wanna beat him down. He still doesn't wanna fight me. I became the number one contender on February 6th and on February 7th he put out a press release as to why he shouldn't have to fight me. This guy's not from a bowing culture. You bow in Brazil they'll hit you over the head and take your wallet out of your pocket. What was one thing he said that really really annoyed you? Primeiro ele falou da minha mulher. Ele falou, não, eu vou entrar na casa dele. Slap his wife on the ass if she doesn't make me a steak medium rare. Just the way I like it. He's got a black belt under the Noguera brothers. Yeah. I think a black belt under the Noguera brothers is saying I like I got a free brinquedo do do Mac McDonald feliz. He beat up a math teacher. He beat up a slow and unathletic light heavyweight, a couple of them. I've never been much of a talker. My focus is going in and, and doing my job inside the octagon. I'm just focused on going in there and uh, doing my job and beating up my opponents like I always do. I don't fully know what respect means. That sounds like something a kid says in the street after he's getting ready to take your coat and shoes. Tem boca fala o que quer, até papagaio fala, né? Por que ele não pode falar? Ele tem esse direito também. I fought five world champions and I beat them all. I fought 12 guys in the top 10 and I beat 10 of them. He can't make either of those claims. He hasn't accomplished near what I've accomplished in this sport. I beat every champion there's ever been except one. I'm relaxed for this fight. Uh, I, I'm used to fighting idiots like him that are talking about me. I've heard of you. Now I thought, I didn't know I'd ever meet you, but ladies and gentlemen, this is Anderson Silva's fan. She start, uh, you know, I just, I don't talk. I just, this isn't a war. We're not gonna go out and battle each other. Eu tipo absolvi, né? Tipo samurai. Eu falei, você não tá entendendo. <laughs> when I come to the press to the weight check and I come close and boom my shoulder in a chair and everybody about, and I say now I move something in the mind this guy now the fight starts this is gonna be a one-sided pounding and I'm swinging the hammer I go kill this motherfucker welcome to the pre-funk of Anderson Silva's retirement party hosted by yours truly Eu vou enfiar a porrada nesse cara, vou quebrar os braços desse cara, vou quebrar todos os dentes da boca desse cara. So much for being calm, huh, Anderson? But hey, I'm not here to judge. You did remain fairly calm, given what you were dealing with behind the scenes. E você tava machucado quanto tempo antes da luta? Uma semana, four or five weeks to the fight. I trained with the judo guy, and the guy gave me one takedown, and I hurt my my ribs. And the doctor doing the MRI and say, I think it's better you're not fight because this is broken, you're in trouble. And I say, you know what? I go fight. And I, what do you say? No, yeah, go fight. 
I don't care. I go fight. Chell disrespected Anderson's coaches, his country, his legacy, his wife, and somehow Anderson had to go out there and fight the greatest wrestler he's ever faced with a broken rib. Eu tomei uma bomba, cara. Comecei a ver três. Three Chael and um Bob Marley. Stand up, stand up. <laughs> I respected what he could do on his feet. I wasn't interested in contesting it there. When national championships as a wrestler, he's never wrestled before. This is simple math. Chael Sonnen dominated Anderson Silva on the ground for 23 minutes straight with superior top control and ground and pound. I mean, he won four and a half rounds, Chael yep. Sonnen. It was over. This guy, could, Chael Sonnen, was beating him. I mean, is it too early for Chael to start celebrating? Are we three minutes away from having a new champion? Did I, you think you were going to lose? No, no. You thought you were going to no, win no, still? No, 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 no. Like I never, fifth round. I didn't put in that in my mind. No, man. Tô te dando a minha palavra de honra. Eu quero Como teu faixa preta, eu vou finalizar ele. I feel his little tired to breathe because he's punch me, punch me, and I look at me in my face, it don't change. I look in your eyes and look at me and say... As he was ground and pounding you? Yeah. He kept looking at him? Punch me, punch me and say, just do it, man. And I I do it on one hard point. And I put in the hands down and he say, now is my time. And towards the end of the fight, he, he started to set up a triangle. I'm going to finish him, I'm going to finish him, I'm going to put him in the triangle. And um, I just didn't react to it. He's got his legs across, that's what's it. He's tapping! It's all over! He came that close to being the middleweight champion of the world. So if he just If he just defended that triangle. This guy hit me five rounds. He hit me more than I hit my entire life. And he didn't win. This guy got roughed up and beat up for almost four, five full rounds, but finds a way to win. Chael helped me to make something better in my training because Chael pushed me hard to doing something better and better. Chael Sonnen did the impossible. He made Anderson Silva look human. I had the opportunity to see that I was a normal guy, normal, that I was blood, that I was not unbeatable, that Anderson was a normal guy, like all the others, he Chael Sonnen deserved to be here tonight. He, he talked a lot of smack and came in and backed it up and proved it. He was less than two minutes away from winning the fight. We scour planet Earth and we came down to the two best guys. If you go look at the rankings tomorrow morning, we're still going to be the two best guys. To be honest with you, I don't really have anything against Chael. Um, you know, this is a sport. I respect Chael. I respect all of my opponents. At the end of the day, you either get your hand raised or you don't. And I did it. And, and that's it. And I'll live with it. But I'm devastated. It's definitely a rematch I think people are going to want to see. I was looking at Twitter, everybody's saying rematch, rematch. So we'll see what happens. This fight is iconic because not only did we witness one of the greatest comebacks in UFC history, but we also witnessed the birth of the bad guy. If you're not familiar with Chell's story, I recommend you check out the documentary on my channel after this video. But that's gonna have to wait because Anderson has a few more iconic moments to deliver. Anderson was facing Vitor Belfort, an extremely talented MMA legend who only lost to the best. But once again, Anderson felt disrespected by his fellow countrymen. The other thing that hasn't really surfaced between these two publicly is their dislike for each other. They used to train together. Um, there's accusations of what used to happen when they trained together. I'm part of a team, a part of a family, which is Team Noguera. And we have a code of honor in Team Noguera that we would never fight each other. And uh, Vitor made that choice, and he, and he took the path that he wanted to take. And Anderson was not afraid to show his anger. I tear a mask and he said, I'm going to go to <laughs> Nobody understood. What do you think of Vitor's performance? Uh, well, it didn't last long. I never seen a foot come up that quick, and that and the toes hitting the motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> never seen anything like that in my life, especially in a finish. What about you? Video game. That's yeah. the only place I've ever seen something like that. What do you want next? I don't know. I'm staying here for a fight. He's the greatest fighter in the world. I mean, the, the guy's so incredibly talented, and when he lets it go stuff like this happens. Anderson delivered one of the most iconic knockouts the sport has ever seen. But before we could even enjoy it, Steven Seagal took credit for it. Right before he walked out, I said, you know, stay away from him for the first, you know, two, three minutes. 
just kind of get him frustrated and then fake low and come high and do that kick that I've been teaching you. Everything I'm teaching him is standing and how to not go on the ground. Look, Anderson and his team clearly have a sense of humor and Steven Seagal makes Tito Ortiz look smart. The future is the future now and the past is the past. You live and you learn. You live and you learn and you forget, I hope. <laughs> but who cares what Bullshito masters have to say? What do real fighters have to say about that performance? Anderson Silva just knocked out Vitor Belfort to retain his middleweight championship. And the next man in line for that title is this man right here, Yushin Okami. And we're going to get his thoughts on the win. Actually, no need. Anderson finished Yushin Okami in the second round to not only earn his ninth title defense and 14th straight UFC victory, but he also avenged that DQ loss from Rumble on the Rock. One of his best performances ever, the way he just almost toyed with Okami in the second round. This guy is the pound for pound best fighter in the world. There's no debate. There's no, you're out of your mind if you don't think that this guy is the pound for pound best fighter in the world. Idiots, do you understand what happened here tonight? This guy is the best fighter in the world and, and probably one of the best ever and it, he makes the 185 pound division look weak it's true anderson did make the division look weak but to be fair there was one man who didn't do too bad and who knows maybe he played nicer this time around anderson silva you absolutely suck i call him out and he covers his mouth like a little fancy boy i mean what is that i don't believe jail deserves a rematch but hey you know i'm a, an employee of the ufc and if i have to go in there and beat his ass 10 more times i'll beat his ass 10 more times like pretending you're the world champion i can't believe the guy walks around with a fake belt that's insane! I would never do that! That's not your belt! <laughs> well, whose do you propose it is? I'm gonna wait for him to throw a kick like he always does. I'm gonna put my forehead in his chest, run him into that cage, put him on his prissy little ass, and run this into his head for 25 minutes or until he gives up. Anderson's gonna have to do a good job, a better job than the first fight of, of getting back up once he's grounded. Right. Uh, and hopefully Chell just doesn't have a brain fart. He's a martial artist. I'm a cage fighter, and there's a tremendous difference. I think this is the first time Anderson's ever felt some real pressure. You know, he's got his entire country on his back. He, he tested positive for steroids. He offended a nation. Um, you know, he's been charged with a crime. It's just, I mean, how can you take anything that this guy says for real? I will remain undefeated, undisputed, and I will walk out of there with my middleweight championship. He's got a belt that I want, so he can surrender that belt and hand it over, or I'm going to come and take it. Playtime is over. He can say whatever he wants. Uh, like I said it uh, last week, and I'll say it again, it's over. On um, Saturday, a lot of things are going to change. It's going to be much different after Saturday. If uh, on 7-7, seven, seven, I don't win the world championship. My entire journey is a colossal failure. And any concern that you might come into this fight too emotional and maybe drive away from the fight plan a little bit? Nope. It's a funeral of a career, man. This is coming to an end on 7-7 seven, seven at 7 p.m., 10 in the East, and only on pay-per-view. The game is over. David. You guys will see on Saturday night what I'm talking about. I don't have anything else to say other than he's screwed. This was one of the few times in Anderson's career where there was serious doubt if he could actually beat Chael Sonnen in the rematch. My big problem going to the second fight is I lost respect for him in the first fight. I feel like a doofus because I fell down. Chael Sonnen threw a spinning back fist even Ben Askren would be jealous of, and he found himself against the cage. I remember seeing him and I remember his eyes. They were surprised I was down and he gave me a moment to get up and I elected to stay there. That was my choice. That's a knee. Looking to finish the fight. Tails in trouble. It is all over. I love my working. I love my job. Uh, I'm very, very happy. I'm happy. I'm finished my working. I'm back to my family. That's it. Finish. Here's the thing about this sport. This, this is a young man's game. One day you just show up and you're old. It just happens that fast. Things don't move the way they used to. Uh, you're not as fast as you used to be. You can't, you see the things coming, but you can't get out of the way. You see none of that. 
with Anderson Silva. I think one of the most overlooked things about Anderson Silva is how old this guy is and how old he doesn't look. I enjoy it, I love what I do, and for as long as I can physically and mentally perform at the level that I perform, I plan on keep fighting. The beautiful and unfortunate thing is that he really means that. Ring, phone rings, and wow, it's Ariel Helwani. Heard you're fighting Anderson Silva. Wow, how the hell did you find out about that? I didn't even hear about it yet. Have you seen where I fought him? Yes, I did. Do not do that. <laughs> do the opposite of what I did. He did exactly what he did. No matter how much heart you have, you get a jump knee from Anderson Silva in the solar plexus, and you're going fetal. Anderson Silva destroyed Stefan Bonner at light heavyweight, and we all couldn't be more sure of Anderson's greatness. Nobody can do what this guy can do. He's the greatest of all time. I think he's the greatest in any combat sport. The guy's broke every record in UFC history. He's going to lay down a foundation that nobody will ever, ever be able to break. That's what everybody has to put into context, too. The guy's 37 years old going on 38. Anderson was an inspiration on the road to mythical status, and it finally felt like we were really on the cusp of that GSP super fight. After this fight, is the GSP fight the one that you want? Yeah, this is my focus. GSP. Yeah. But unfortunately, we didn't realize this was the turning point in Anderson's story, leading him down a path more depressing than those in the arms of an angel commercials. Oh, hi there. I'm Paulo Costa from Wish, aka Paulo Costa from Bellator. I disapprove 100%. And the Lionel Rivera YouTube channel needs your support. I have watched some clips. For just one touch of the subscribe button, you could feed the ego of the wimpy soy boy who runs this YouTube channel. For skinny people this? like you. So please, hit subscribe. And if you want to go the extra mile, you could join his $1 YouTube memberships or Patreon in the description and get early access to monthly uploads and get your name in the end credits of videos. Yeah, this is the thing. best. Yeah, okay. This is Enjoy. the best. Keep in mind, over half the money never hits his puny little pockets. He just wants to build a deeper sense of community. I like a lot because he's so funny. If you won't subscribe or become a member, don't worry. You're just a bad person. Thank you. Thank you, Paulo Costa, for the kind words, I guess. But enough of that, Brazilian. Let's see where Anderson's head is at this point. Do you ever have yeah. a point, though, where you're like, you're losing motivation or you like thought for a second, maybe I don't want to do this anymore? Uh, yes, one time. I think I am a nightmare matchup for him. If he had his way, he wouldn't be fighting me. Lowest odds ever on Anderson Silva here in Las Vegas. If he can just maintain that distance and not get caught up in Anderson's kind of fancy stand-up, I think he can beat him. A lot of fighters believe that Chris Weidman is the guy who can win this fight. Começou a, a, a dar defeito. Na minha primeira luta com Weidman. He's either getting punched in the face or I'm, I'm taking him down. He's going to have to figure that out. Now, Weidman's not a bad striker himself. I'm in there. But the war mentally is not there. Chris Weidman is not only going to beat Anderson Silva, he's going to finish Anderson Silva. Does this fight go the distance? I see myself finishing, to be honest. But um, I'm prepared for. I'm preparing myself for a five-round war. I'm scared. I'm very scared. I'm going to say there's going to be an upset. You know, Weidman is a guy that has a really, really strong wrestling background, just like Chael. Anderson Silva and his whole camp uh, were saying, "You're not worthy." You don't deserve a shot. Anderson's got the more experience, but uh, I think Weidman's going to pose a threat that none of the other guys he's really fought has posed a threat. This is a dream fight for me. I'm fighting the greatest of all time. I put on the too much pressure on myself. He's got great ground. He's got great wrestling. His stand-up is good. You're there. You're a number. And then, the more you take it with love, with care, and you have other values there, O que vai importar mesmo é o resultado da luta e o quanto você vendeu. Começou a perder o sentido para mim. I think uh, with the full camp I'll finish him. Right, man. Thank you for the chance for fight you, man. God bless you. Good luck for Saturday. The thing that you have to ask yourself is Anderson Silva going to show up and look 38 years old someday. Is that going to happen? And if it does, is it going to happen Saturday night? Leading up to this fight, Anderson was counted out, suffocated by expectations, falling out of love with the game and trying to outpace Father Time. He took him down, Chris Weidman hit him with big shots from the top. He, he had him in a couple of different submissions. Anderson got out, popped back up to his feet. I always say that I do my best, and tonight I feel that I did my best. I tried to induce Chris into playing my game, and that didn't work. He wasn't scared of him, man. He really wasn't, and that was the difference on Saturday night. When I do that, I make a mistake, and I take knockout with Chris Weidman.
got to respect the game, man. None of us are invincible. A lot of the talk after what happened in the second round is instead more on Anderson and what Anderson did and the idea that essentially Anderson beat himself in spite of how good you looked early on. Chris, you dreamed about this moment. You trained for this moment. Does this even feel real? Anderson Silva doesn't know what it feels like to lose. It's been a very long time since he's lost. No one's invincible and uh, hey, I just gotta say all respect to Anderson Silva. I would love to do a rematch if that's what he would want to do. He, he was an idol of mine. I guarantee you there's nothing he wants more than that rematch with Chris Weidman. Anderson, you, you were playing, you were dropping your hands and taunting him and you got caught. Tell us how you feel about that now. Chris Weidman tonight is the best. He's the new champion. Uh, Chris have my respect because Chris is the best now. Chris is the best. I working hard, but Chris win. E dali da primeira luta com Weidman para as minhas últimas lutas no UFC as coisas desandaram assim. I go for the academy for training. I go for happy. I go for inside for octagon. I go happy. And my last fight. Porque eu já não tava mais afim de estar ali. Uhum. Eu já não tava mais feliz de estar ali. Eu falo com meus coaches, eu não vejo o quão perigo é o punch do cara. Porque se o cara me punch, eu não vejo nada. Agora eu vejo. Esse momento foi realmente chocante. Ninguém podia ter predito esse resultado. E muitos pensaram que era uma fluke, que Anderson showboated muito e foi derrotado. Então, naturalmente, nós tivemos que fazer o rematch. Esse sábado é UFC 168. Eu volto para lutar. Weidman and Anderson Silva. I knew if I was to beat him, we were going to have a rematch, and here it is. So my dream's not complete. I got to beat him on Saturday. I back. Trust me. I back. My goal is just, you know, to be the best me out there, go out there, get a finish, and, and do it in an impressive fashion. You know, I just want to shine out there and, and show that this is my belt and that I'm going to be here for a long time. Yeah, I still have eight fights left in my contract, and as long as I'm still enjoying and I still want to have that desire to go out there and fight, I'm going to keep on fighting. We know Anderson. We know. When I kick Weidman and I feel something, I just drop my body in the ground because I feel I broke it. Oh, oh nice. He checked oh, it. No. He hurt himself. He hurt his leg. He broke his leg. Oh. 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 You didn't even believe it. It didn't make sense to see a leg move like that. You're like, I don't, I don't get it. I didn't know your leg broke as, as soon as it happened. I, I thought you were just in pain. It looked like. Somebody filled up a sock with with pebbles and just like yeah. hit it against something. And it was like it, do, it doesn't didn't make sense. And I remember hearing this screaming like someone was being murdered. And then I came over. I'm like, and then I seen you holding your leg. Anderson was on the receiving end of one of the most gruesome injuries the sport has ever seen. Anderson's fracture occurred roughly at about this level. It's just one of those crazy things. In a million years, you don't ever expect to see that. And, uh, you know, this would be a tough thing to overcome and to come back from at his age. Both bones were displaced or moved out from their normal alignment. Fiquei um ano, cara, com dor. Com dor. Com dor, um ano direto, assim, com dor. To break someone's leg, uh, you know, I've never done that before. And, uh, you know, I, I, you know, like I said, I don't want to see Anderson Silva get hurt like that. He's an incredible human being. He's done amazing things here at the UFC. Maybe he'll want to make a comeback. Who knows? It's very possible that could be his last fight ever. And it's possible that he's such a talented, you know, guy that he could come back from it. Most men would call that a career, but Anderson Silva is not most men. It's funny because my son, Kalil, is a, is a baby. And look at me and say that. We need you back to fight. We need to prove for yourself how much you you my superhero. And I say yes. I go back. Why are you getting back in the ring now, man? Because I love fight. You know. I say I need you back because this is it's part of my life. Fight is part of my life. It's a very interesting when you people ask me why you continue to do this. It's one thing, when you love something, do your best. I'm training hard for my fight, for Nick Diaz. I'm very excited for back. I changed everything in my team, and my leg's good, and I'm very excited for fight. I'm very excited for back for fight, because this is my, my power, this is my energy. Leading up to his battle against Nick Diaz, Anderson Silva had to continuously justify why he was even there, and during the fight, Nick Diaz showed very little respect for the spider. Look at this! This is, this is the greatest thing I've ever seen! Wow, really? <laughs>
I love it! Aside from Nick's antics, it was a pretty normal kickboxing match where Anderson Silva clearly won, but it wasn't vintage Anderson Silva. Emotional, Anderson. How, how, how important was this victory to you? Thank you, God. Thank you for giving me one more chance for staying here. Thank you, my family, my kids. My son, Khalil, say, Dad, congratulations, but done. Back to home, please. No more fight. With that, Anderson satisfied his son's wish to get back in the cage and get one more win. But actually, he didn't win. So Anderson Silva had a pre-fight test, an out-of-competition test. What do you have to say to your fans about the failed drug test? I mean, Bisbing was giving him a ton of shit, saying you've been on steroids your whole career. Fair assumption. We don't know if that's true or not true. We just know the one time he was tested, he got caught. I need check for old supplement I use because I never uh, fought for the commission. Foi mandado manipular o negócio suplemento para tomar o suplemento estava contaminado. E aí como é que eu provar que eu não? Até provar já tinha feito um estrago na minha vida. Like Anderson Silva just tested positive again. Again. Do you think that that takes him out of the consideration for the greatest of all time? In my mind, 100%. Do you feel like, you know, innocent or not, that that something has changed in the way people view you after the past year? Anderson's victory over Nick Diaz was overturned to a no contest because Anderson Anderson Silva tested positive for banned substances. Silva blamed it on some bedroom enhancement drugs he took, and fans tried to justify it, saying that Silva took steroids to heal from his leg break. But no matter how you split it, Anderson's legacy was tainted forever, and his next opponent did not hold back. Hey guys, who do we know that failed the drugs test? <laughs> Oh, I'm Anderson Silva. This man is a cheat. This man is a fraud. And I will make you pay for your mistakes tomorrow night, my friend. Yeah, I'm old. You're old. But, you know what? I'm, I'm old, but I'm more smart. <laughs> I'm champion for a long time, you know? Yes, on steroids. All the needles in your ass, all the steroids will not help you. You p it. Harsh words for Michael Bisping, but Silva almost got his revenge three rounds deep. So my mouthpiece gets knocked out. So I stop and I turn and I go, ref, my mouthpiece. As I look back, I'm like, oh, f The Anderson. flying knee that Anderson landed was goddamn glorious. But it was the end of the round. Anderson runs off, he jumps on top of the cage, he's celebrating all the rest of it. I'm led on the floor in a crumpled mess. I look up at Herb D and I'm like, I'm not out, Herb. Anderson thought he won the fight by knockout, but to his surprise, they returned to their corners and Michael Bisping rallied back. That dude has one eyeball, okay? Straight he up got one eye. Knocked out dead at the end of the third round, came back and won the fourth. Michael! This fight was controversial on many levels, and many fans thought it was a robbery. There was things that were said, but. Um, I have the utmost respect for Anderson Silva. This is the greatest fighter of all time. But at this point, we're all thinking, look, Anderson, you already proved that you can still hang in there, and you already made your point to your son. What else is there to prove? I just stay in home. I just relax. I take the news. Oh, John Jones out the fight. And I... Wow. See, I don't believe it. John Jones was pulled from his UFC 200 matchup against Daniel Cormier due to an USADA violation. But DC still needed a dance partner. Aí eu peguei o telefone e falei, acho que eu luto com esse gordinho aí. I'd say, you crazy? You, you, you have an injury months ago? What, what are you talking about? You know, I've gone through a lot of phases in my UFC career and, and no one's been able to beat everything that I've done. And so, you know, I really feel like I'm a blessed guy. Thanks, Dana, for making this happening. How far out was the fight at that point? I think four days. Now we have Daniel Cormier versus Anderson Silva. It will not be for the title. It will be three rounds. Anderson Silva to fight Daniel Cormier at UFC 200. <gasps> An honor and a privilege to fight Anderson Silva. Great job by the UFC uh, getting an opponent like this on such short notice. Are you in shape at this point? Or no, just... no, no. But my oh. mind went. Yeah. You know, and I just, I go do this just for a few something inside my heart, you know. I want to ask you, the UFC doesn't show any appreciation that you're pretty much saving I, the fight. You love, you love. You don't love, don't do it because I you're see. waiting for people. Oh, you're yeah, good. It, it, you're amazing. No, no, you're don't do that. Anderson Silva took a bout against one of the greatest light heavyweight and heavyweight competitors in UFC history just to feel something. And as expected, DC was much bigger than Anderson and dominated him on the ground to a decision victory. Daniel DC Paul! 
was a little nervous. He's so good. And I mean, I, I did what I had to do. For me to go out there and get a victory over someone like Anderson Silva, that's enough for me. To be fair to Anderson, in his next fight in 2017, he scored a decision victory over Derek Brunson. I'm here with the winner, Anderson Silva. Anderson, you, you seem overcome with emotion. Please tell us how you feel right now. I know I'm, I'm, I'm too old for a fight. I know. The old guys in here is too fast for me. Strong. But I put in my heart because fight is my life. Fight is my my heart. It's, this is me. It's fight. But many, many fans and most media consider the decision a robbery. And no matter what way you look at it, prime Anderson Silva would have walked through Derek Brunson. But even this small victory wasn't enough for Anderson. It started to almost seem like you were going in the direction of possibly walking away, but that's not what you're saying. You're saying you want to continue to compete here in the UFC? Of course, I have a maybe a couple, four, five fights. Look, Anderson deserves to be remembered for his contributions to the sport, not for the shell of a fighter he was when he lost via leg kick to Jared Cannonier in May 2019, or when he lost via TKO to Uriah Hall in his final UFC fight. Sometimes it's very difficult for us to stop, you know, and, uh, but today is the, the final day, and I'm so happy to be here. The people, I think, interviewed Dana and then I say, oh, I'm completely sad because I put Anderson in that situation. Listen, fight is fight. Yeah. Sometimes you can win, sometimes you lose. I have uh, the best moment in my life with every single opponent I fight here in UFC. That was his official retirement, but if you're anything like me, you'd prefer to remember Anderson for his more ceremonial or symbolic retirement. Schmo knows you're a big fan of Anderson Silva. What was it like watching him bow down inside the octagon for the final time? For him to say goodbye to his art form, it was heavy. Like I said, I'm a fan of Anderson Silva, but doesn't mean when there was a contract in front of me, I signed to fight him. I don't give a f Look, I'm a fan of this man. But just because I'm a fan doesn't mean you can't catch these hands and elbow and feet and knee. When I talk to my kids and my wife and all my family, uh, it's all the same. Why? <laughs> Don't do that! And I say, okay, it's a passion. You know, it's a passion. You love your job, you, you, you keep doing. Tomorrow we're going to throw everything in the cage. We're going to have fun, all right? I'll send them off in a nice way. A lot of you new fans weren't around during his reign what it felt like. You might have come around the Rousey era or the McGregor era, but you don't realize who this guy is. When I talking about fight, when I, people talking about you the best or, or something the best, it's not about the best. It's about how much you're doing something special for this sport. He brought me into this game, you know? This guy inspired me to be, to be able to believe like a skinny black guy can just come in here and fuck everyone up. You know what? Let me tell you something. <laughs> This sport is very interesting because one day you stay here, you win a lot, and a lot of people talk, you the best, and change fast. This is, you know, the guy that I, I came up watching, so when I beat this guy, this is better than the belt to me. I could retire happy. It's a two generation inside the cage, and great show for everyone, you know, I, I'm, I'm so happy. Anderson Silva faced Israel Adesanya in 2019, and it felt like Silva was ready for a changing of the guard. When I hit him, I didn't hit him clean. I'm not trying to hit him where he is. I'm trying to hit him where he's gonna be. Mm. But then he knows that as well. He'd anticipate that and then pause. The distance is just right, so it just nicks him. I mean, the first round was ridiculous. I mean, it, it, we, we were all texting back and forth, and, and Joe Silva said, this this route looks, looks like a kung fu movie. I fanboyed over the guy his whole career, and I've studied him. I knew what he was gonna do before he do it. I tripped. And as I was getting back up, I was like, all right, here comes the flying knee. I've seen this many times. And I just slid to the left. People were like, oh, did you hold back on Anderson? I'm like, fuck no. I, was, I rocked him in the first round. And if I had deadened him, I was trying to. I was trying to win. Hands down, getting punched in the face with some measly strikes. And they expected me to throw a big one. Like, even put us back against the fence. That's how Bisping got caught with an up kick. I'm not stupid. Anderson said he always wants to fight the mirror image of himself. Well, he got it tonight. There's a split second in there that I was just like, holy shit. I'm fighting Anderson Silva. <laughs> He's just a legend in this game, a living legend. You can't take anything away from that. If you watch the fight, it felt like Israel Adesanya was trying to pay Anderson the respect of showing him that Izzy was the new generation of fighter 
that was built on the shoulders of Anderson Silva. Thank you. Obrigado, my friend. You've been doing this for a long time, and I appreciate you. I'm very happy, guys. First of all, I need to say thank you, God. Thank you for giving me one more chance for coming here and do my best. This is my, my heart. This is my life. I continue to fight because this is my heart. Anderson Silva syndrome is very, very real. Anderson Silva is a legend. He had a legendary career. He is in discussion for the greatest of all time. Even now, nobody has 16 win streak like him. No. This guy, this guy don't lose long time. Anderson Silva syndrome is the incorruptible love of fighting. You're saying you want to continue to compete here in the UFC? This is my, my power. This is my energy. Thank you for giving me one more chance for staying here. I just try to enjoy every single moment I come inside the cage. It is the unsustainable over-reliance of fighting to find happiness. Everything I do, I do because I love, because I believe in this is my air. This is something inside my heart, you know? I think when you do Uma coisa que você é feliz, que te traz alegria, que te traz prazer, essa é uma das grandes motivações, né? This syndrome makes it possible for you to achieve greatness. When you're doing something with your heart, you love, you have a passion, you make successful. That's I think I make successful in my entire life because I working hard, pass for the different experience in my life, bad and good. And today I I feel so happy. It's the reason, Anderson, you have the longest UFC title reign, the most championship knockdowns, knockouts, and finishes in UFC history. And more importantly, it's the reason we love you, Anderson. He made the top guys in the world look easy. People love finishes, and Anderson could always provide a finish at any moment. For a handful of years, no one could come close to him. But it's also the reason there will always be one more fight. And as much as we want to ask you to stop, we understand that you do it for us. Thank you guys, thank you. You know, I I worked my entire life for this sport and uh, I try to do my best. And I need to say thank you God for giving one more time. Wow, I'm so happy. Thank you to my patrons and members. Become one yourself to get your name in the credits. If you like this video, you will love the others on my channel, so subscribe because Yeah, my African brother. Yeah, my African brother. I'm African, but I ain't no brother of yours, son.